Hello farmers, thank you for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. This is where we discuss everything agriculture in the agricultural fraternity of Zimbabwe. Today we are going to be looking at tobacco marketing. We are doing it as we are commemorating Women's Day, 8 March 2023. To kickstart this episode, we have the Vice President of Zimbabwe, Comrade Dr. Chiwenga, who's going to be taking us through his understanding in tobacco marketing and tobacco production. Himself is also a tobacco farmer and today, like many others, we have come to converge and have a listen to what he has to say in line with our government policies. Stay tuned. Good morning to you all, especially women farmers, today being their day. Congratulations. I am pleased to officiate at this cell, which marks the start of the 2023 tobacco marketing season. Stakeholders in the whole tobacco value chain, from input providers, growers, contractors, Vendors, off takers, and many more, all wait in anticipation of reaping the rewards of a long and charity tobacco production season. As the regulating authority, the attention and focus of the tobacco industry and marketing board should be fixed on the entire value chain in order to ensure that there is fairness, ethical behavior, and profit, transparent accountability, discipline, ethics, and sustainability in this important crop value chain. These are the values that, are, that define our tobacco industry. Ladies and gentlemen, as government, our eyes are transfixed on the role of tobacco in uplifting the livelihoods of Zimbabwe. In line with our president, our president, His Excellency, Comrade Dr. Emerson Damdumnangapa's vision of transforming Zimbabwe into an empowered and prosperous upper middle income society that may be better. Let me ask you to mention that agriculture is in the epicenter of the vision. With reference to tobacco industry, the government has launched the tobacco value chain transformation plan whose core objectives are one, to accelerate localization of tobacco funding to 70% of the cost of production by 2025. Two, to raise tobacco productivity and increase production from 262 million kilograms per year to 300 kilograms by 20. 25. And three, to increase the production of alternative crops and increase their contribution to the farmer's income to 25% by 2025. And lastly, four, to increase the level of value addition and beneficiation of tobacco into cattle and production cigarettes from 2% of total tobacco production to 30% in order to increase export of cigarettes cigarette by 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, the vision of the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Dr. Emerson Dr. of Nangagwa, is about leaving no one and no place behind. 
To achieve Vision 2030, we should accelerate and enhance agricultural production, productivity, and profitability growth in line with the, with the National Development Strategy 1. The President of the Republic of Zimbabwe has often eloquently elaborated on the pathway trajectory and mandate of the attainment of this great vision are setting boldly that Nika Inovakwa Nebedevai, which Tungwa Shakai Nebedevai. We are the people of Zimbabwe. We have the responsibility to build our country. And all of us, we are the rulers of our beautiful, God given country. As Tobacco stakeholders, you are part of this great nation building project. And together, we will achieve this important milestone. Through the Tobacco Value Chain Transformation Plan, we will build this industry farm by farm to a United States dollar 5 billion industry by 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, agriculture contributes meaningfully to the country's export aims. And the flagship crop is tobacco. With exports close to US dollar, dollars one billion. I am delighted to note that tobacco production has rebounded significantly since the launch of the Red Reform Program in 2000. For instance, Zimbabwe produced 211 million kilograms of tobacco in 2021 and 212 million kilograms in 2022 last year. The Second Republic's policy thrust led to the all time high production of 261 million kilograms. In, 20, uh, in 2019, and surpassing the 239 million kilograms in 1998. The tobacco value chain transformation plan aims for a production of 300 million kilograms by 2025. The Tobacco Transformation Plan also focuses on localizing financing of tobacco production. As you may be aware, CARNET has already approved a US $60 million seed fund for this purpose. As we look forward for the 2023-2024 season, I urge treasure to avail the much needed seed financing. I am, however, pleased to note that the Minister of Land, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Development is in advanced discussions for value addition of our tobacco with local and foreign. I would like to reiterate that Zimbabwe is open for business. It is now my simple honor to declare the 2023 tobacco marketing season officially open. There you hear it, viewers. That was the Vice President of Zimbabwe, Comrade Dr. Chiwenga, who was giving us the highlights of this marketing season. On that note, viewers, we've come to the end of the first segment. We are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Stay tuned.
Thank you for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030, where we are looking at tobacco produ uh, production and marketing this 2023. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer, Wazanae Manyore. It's on 0772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanae. Leave your comments and suggestions and make a follow-up on this episode and more. We are also on YouTube. It's Agribusiness with Wazanae. We now have a very vibrant Twitter timeline. It's at Agribusiness 110. Now, at this point in time, I'm going to cross over and talk about policy and regulations in our tobacco industry ahead of the tobacco marketing season. I am going to be joined by Mr. Patrick Devnish. He is the board chairman of the Tobacco Industry and Marketing Board. Stay tuned. At this point in time, I have taken the liberty of inviting Mr. Patrick Devnish. He is the board chairman of the Tobacco Industry and Marketing Board. Mr. Devnish, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. As we get into our discussion, say, you would find that there's been issues in our tobacco farming community whereby farmers are crying in terms of viability. The cost of production is increasing year by year, season by season, and yet the prices are remaining stagnant. What measures have been put in place to ensure that tobacco production remains viable for the Zimbabwean farmer? Well, I think the, the prices did improve a little bit last year, and the pricing has, has uh, far more to do with global supply and demand than it has to do with the cost of production, unfortunately. So what we need to do is improve the efficiency of our farmers. As, uh, as the minister was saying in his speech, we don't need horizontal growth, we need vertical growth. So we keep the hectares the same, but we make our farmers better and better so they're more efficient, they produce a heavier crop, and a better quality crop. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Devnish. I still want to talk about issues surrounding viability, now aligning it to payment. This year, there's been great improvements from our government through the Ministry of Finance and the Treasury, whereby our farmers have been increased their foreign currency retention. What are your sentiments, your views, and even emphasizing on it to our viewers there at home? Well, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that uh, the, the Reserve Bank and the Ministry of Finance are, are improving these, uh, these, uh, these allowances. So uh, tobacco is up to 85% now. And when you think about it, uh, any farmer will always have some percentage of local costs. Yes. So I think that makes a huge difference and it, it incentivizes people to grow tobacco, which allows us to move towards our target of 300 million kilos. Now in your speech, you touched briefly to uh, in line of payments. Some of our tobacco farmers have been having challenges in years prior to this one. Some haven't still received payments. Can you touch briefly in terms of payments, what do you have in store this year for our farmers? Well, the legislation says that a farmer must be paid 48 hours after the point of sale. Mm -hmm. There were problems last year which are nearly overcome. We hope by this weekend to have overcome those problems entirely. But as I said in my speech, the key word for the TIMB this year is discipline and any uh, a merchant or contractor who does not pay his farmers within 48 hours will have his license suspended until such time as he's made those payments. We will not allow this problem to get out of hand this year. Okay, uh, Mr. Devnish, when you look at sustainability, it speaks on two aspects, major aspects, conservation, agriculture, farming with future generations in mind, and at the same time, viability, profitability. Can you talk to us in terms of aligning, finding the nexus between conservation and agriculture whilst remaining profitable? You would find that our farmers would say, the minute I want to go the conservation way, I'm going to make losses. But that is not the case. Can you talk to us in terms of conservation and viability in tobacco farming? Well, I, I don't know how much you've read about uh, conservation, agriculture, soil management, etc. But the truth is, the, the better you look after your soil, the better the quality and quantity of your output. So it's all about training and that was one of the other uh, comments that the Vice President made this morning in our pre-briefing. We need to increase the quantity and quality of training of farmers to, to, to really learn how to do uh, farm God's way. Okay, now finally in terms of profitability, 
what should you want to say? Also aligning it today, we are celebrating Women's Day, and even the Vice President did touch briefly on that, where he was congratulating the women in Zimbabwe. The government is well aware of the challenges that our women might be experiencing, but at the same time, it is well enforcing the point of empowerment in our women farming community. As we round off, can you touch briefly your sentiments, your words of encouragement? Well, first of all, someone asked me earlier, are we encouraging women to uh, grow tobacco? The answer to the question is yes, but more importantly, more and more women are growing tobacco. Yes. And women make very good farmers because they pay attention to detail. Uh, us men, you know, we like the big picture, whereas the ladies are prepared to really focus. And that is what makes a good tobacco farmer. Yes. Someone who pays attention to detail and does the right things at the right time. So I expect we're going to see more and more women uh, growing tobacco, particularly in the smallholder sector. Thank you so much, Mr. Dave Nish. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thanks a lot. From Mr. Patrick Devnish, who was explaining how the marketing system is going to progress, we have taken the liberty of inviting Mr. Isaiah Hokonya. He is head inspectorate working with our regulatory authority, the Tobacco Industry Marketing Board, right here in Zimbabwe. Mr. Hokonya, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Azana. As we get into our discussion, say, sometimes farmers participate in site marketing without knowing. Can you give us maybe a brief background and a description of what site marketing is? Because a lot of people are committing crime. Thank you, Azanai. I think as a board, we've put in place some proactive and uh, proactive strategies to try to educate our farmers so that at least they are aware of what site marketing is, is and the consequences thereafter. So we are saying, if, if a, a farmer is said to have site marketed, he or she would have sold his tobacco to a contractor who did not or did not fund him. Or either sold tobacco to the auction floor whilst he was contracted by a certain contracting company. At the same time, we are saying even the contractors themselves, they are not allowed to buy tobacco from farmers whom they did not fund. Okay. Yes. Now, Mr. Oponya, you would find that if the system progresses, some people are still going to engage in site marketing and commit crimes. What penalties have been put in place? Yeah, as a board, we've come up with some 10 penalties to try to discourage these perpetrators of illegal tobacco crimes. As a farmer, when he's caught site marketing or perpetrating or facilitating site marketing, he's expected or is forced to pay 20 US dollars per each site marketed bill. Then for those contracting companies who are caught facilitating site marketing, they are also expected to pay 100 US dollar per each site marketed bill. Then in the event that the respective companies are seen continuing in that illegal activity, the board is mandated either to cancel or withdraw the license from them. Some of our farmers here in Zimbabwe end up engaging in the your words of advice or your words of encouragement to our farming community in terms of not entertaining Makoronira Kuma Prasjai. Thank you, Azanai. On that material respect, we are saying our farmers they are discouraged at all costs to sell or to do what we call buttering, to exchange their tobacco either with some groceries, with those respective illegal buyers. In the event that we intercept those farmers, because we have got our inspectorate team, which is alert right on the ground, and our informers as well right on the ground. So if those farmers are caught, they are either going to have their grower numbers cancelled or blacklisted from the industry. At the same time, those buyers will be caught and taken to court for prosecution. Thank you so much, Mr. Okonya, on educating us in issues surrounding site marketing. It was a pleasure having you with us today. No, thank you so much, Wazana. Welcome back to you as we are here in the third and final segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in Support of Vision 2030. Now we are, for, we are going to be looking at the agricultural industry here in Zimbabwe. 
we cannot ignore the fundamental role that is being played by the tobacco production or tobacco industry in our agricultural fraternity, which is the case today. We are going to be hanging out with farmers from various locations in our country. We have come to sell their tobacco and be rewarded for their labor and toil. Today we are celebrating Women's Day and it so happened that we are also marketing tobacco. We are in the tobacco marketing season. We have taken the liberty <laughs> of inviting Amai Chibaya. She is a female farmer in celebration of Women's Day. Amai Chibaya, I don't know what you're doing. I was not saying that. Yes. Did you bring a much longer chair? Why? Munori mira muri kupi uye murukuri machi. Munori mira ndiri kumundori chivir. Munori macho ba. Eh. Eh. Kure nunda kana dari masongo ma three hectares. Eh. All right. Kakuri ma kwa muruku ita forge ga murukuri ma ne kambani ipi murukuri ma makasi miri rida ere kana tu murukuri ma muruku basi ruane kambani. Ewa murukuri ma nakasi miri rida. Eh. Muruku basi ruama basi enyu ne muri ere mune va shandi ere ukama wenyu ne va shandi ukama wenyu ne ma dumeni. Ano batira ba kuri mafuji kashaka mirasi. Andruku batira wani muri, nyoko toro wa shandi pano ne ap. Ai madumeni e e, andruku batira wani madumeni e mu area. Wani kwa yashiti batira wosini ge shiti remir. Alright. Now amai chiba ya, andruku tuko ati andruku celebrate aku madzimai, ende na asi andruku tarisanya tukutenge siku kwe fuji. Jamu kada kutaura, mairani kutenge siku kwe fuji kwa ne madzimai kuya kumusika. Jaka mirasi se madzimai ba kutenge siku kwa mneta fuji. Sau tanga dongo tena mai, nishpoche upenyu, uye ni kutu kundi saku shanda kwa tuguta. Dongo tu kumazimai, gati shinge isa mazimai anas, gati rimei, kuri makuwa kana, kuri makuno kune punduto. Uye musa chika kuya usi tenge sa fujiga zenyu, kuno magasuno nguka kuya mtenge sa fujiga zenyu, kana yuo mabaya achikise, magasuno nguka kuya mshita wara na wapa, kana pande shinge shaitika sna kuku fadzai, magasuno nguka shakari fiti ku kuta wara na wapa, wana wasinga achikise. Thank you Zimbabwe for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. Now as we are rounding off this segment, this episode, we have taken the liberty of inviting a youthful farmer who is going to be taking us through the various uh, projects that is taking uh, in agriculture and agricultural fraternity. At this point in time, I have been joined by Constant Chishiri. Constant Nogutingamiza Bachiroma. Yes. Tichipina mchirongwa constant, urukuri mira uri kupi, kana eri fojiga wakari mama hekta zaga wanda shakadi, uruku basiru wa ere kana uturukuri maweka ni maria kwe mu. Yes, ini ndi nori mandri karoi kuurungwe area, urban area, ini ndi nori mafojiga, fojiga ndi nori mama hekta zano, ndi nori mama hekta zano ita 2 hekta zano, kuri makuwa ndri kuta fojiga huu. Ah, ini sisi diki ndrugo na zine sanduko ndo kutu pesa pandrugo rima ndrugo manda kasi miri la ndstream contract ndrugo rima ndri nda kasi miri la ndstenga sra fuji yangu auction ah pandrugo rima eh fuji kaya nguvu kumpa sanduko raga kura cha hizo right kichipende ra Mr Chishiri eh jamuru kuna jamuru kubasi wana uru mendi kuto ani kama mtu rene pe kuri maipa apu i uru mendi akapindi kuna zime ni kanga na kudara sa dada ora ni kani wachidi kwa ito shape pe kuri ma. Mazamuka tayari rosa kana kashukutu kwenye uru mende, nchirongwa chini ndani ya group business in support of Vision 2030. Muku pende rasha, muka tayari rosa, muku kona ruoko ro uru mende nchi. Inne same youth, uru mende yari kundi baadhi ra, especially kwenye duka magunze kwenye situation. Uru mende yari kundi baadhi ra kwenye digi strukupiwa, eh ma ma inputs, tunopiwa mbeu, tunopiwa fertilizer, ne uru mende, eh tishipiwa ma project, tishukutuwa ma garden. E ne urumende saka zvinhu zviri kuti fadza chaizvo zviri kuti vane urumende ne kuti iri kuti pawo zvekuita Thank you so much uh, Mr Chishiri it was a pleasure having you here today Thank you The government of Zimbabwe remains dedicated to empowering the farming community given that well over 67% of our population makes a living off of agricultural ventures we are talking of becoming an upper middle class economy where we are talking of not leaving anyone behind it's inclusive leaving no one and no place behind my name is Ozanai Manyore and I'm also on Instagram it's a W Manyore and the crew behind the scenes have yourselves a fabulous evening thank you for watching <laughs>